Hello everybody, Crips here, and yeah, welcome, I guess, right. All right, so Fast Flick, the advanced tutorial. So if you've seen the basic, this is the advanced. So let's launch Fast Flick, Tools, Fast Flick. So there you go. So choose the template you want. So I'm going to use the same template I did in the basic uh, tutorial, and I'm going to go to Add Media. Now, before I add in my photos, let's bring over the photos. Before I add in all the photos, I'm going to do something different. Uh, you'll see here, highlight at one, that my dimension on this photo is quite large. And do I really require such a large file for this project? Now, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to show you how to use a script in uh, PaintShop Pro. And secondly, the reason why I do this, video editors are very, very resource hungry. So I'll do anything I can to help the process of rendering it and help me edit out. So let's change the, the size of these photos to something a little bit more manageable. So let's go into PaintShop Pro. So let's drag in a photo. There you go. So as you can see, this is 21% of the original size. So it is quite a large photo. So do I really need a large photo like this? No. So I'm going to change the size. But because, as I said before, I have so many, I want to be able to change them all at once. I don't want to do it one by one because why would I? So I'm going, to train, I'm going to create a script. So I go to File, Script, and then Start Recording. So every action I do after this, it's going to make, uh, it's going to record it. So let's go into Image, and then resize my image. And I'm probably about 22%. So let's have a look at the pixels. Yeah, about 30. You know, that's fine. It's going to get pretty close to 100% with this because I'm... I like using 1280 by 720 for all my videos. It's, a, it's the industry standard. A lot of people go, no, no, you got to have 1080 because it's... Honestly, I don't see the difference in quality unless I'm watching it on TV. So press OK. So and it's, look, 96. I'm pretty close. Uh, I don't mind the size of this photo. It's quite large. So I've done, uh, finished with my recording. So I'm going to go back into File, uh, Script, and then save the recording. So here we go. So I give it a name, file name. I've called my uh, script fast flick dot. And once I'm done with that, I just press save. Yes, because I'm overriding the original because for this tutorial. Now I'm done with this photo. So let's get rid of this photo. No, I don't want to save it. All right, so how do I then convert all these photos at once? Go into file and I'm going to go to batch process. All right, so I'm going to use my script again. So here's my script fast flick. If you don't see it, Drop down menu, scroll down, fast flick. All you need to do is choose the type of file, JPEG is fine, and the folder. So let's look for a folder that I can use. Uh, small flick. Uh, lucky I spelled that with an F and not with a D. Oh, never mind. All right, so now it's going to be in this folder. So I'm going to browse and then look for the files. There we go. These are all my files. Control A and select. Once I'm done, I simply press start. So this is going to go through the whole process of converting, as you can see, 29 photos to the pixel size that I choose before, which was roughly around about 1300 or 22% of the original. So this is going to take a bit. I'll, uh, well, we're almost done anyway. And then once we're done, we can bring all those photos back into Fast Flick, smaller, smaller size, so it's easy to work with. Bingo, we're done. Okay, so let's go into Fast Flick. Let's add that media. Now, you can do it, you know, add the button, or you can just, let's have a look at this first. There you go, perfect. So I'm gonna do a Control A, and just drag it in like so. Isn't that simple? Okay, so here we are, same thing. You can double click, and then, you know, look for the photos you wanna move around. So do that, change the photos and whatnot. Uh, you've seen the basic tutorial, so I don't need to teach you how to do all this. So let's just uh, let's do something more different, a uh, little bit different. I'm happy with this. I'm not really going to play with editing everything because that's not what this video is about. I want to show the advanced mode. So go to save and share. Now, there's two things you can do here. Uh, one is you can just launch a video right here like I did in basic, but that's not the point of this, right? Another thing I also noticed is... Um, it doesn't give me the options that I really want with the the share output. 
I would rather use the share output actually in Video Studio. So let's go into Video Studio because in Video Studio, that's where all the advanced stuff happens. So edit in Video Studio, look what it does. It brings everything onto the timeline for me. Here it is, it's all here. It's the exact same project. And it's just here now. So now I have way more control. I can add in filters, effects, I can change everything. Okay, now uh, if you see the word uh, FX red on here, that means there's a, a filter on that. So if you want to do anything with that, double click. Okay, and then you can just go into the edit tab and you can see that's apply and zoom. So that's that is the effect on this clip. So if I want to uncheck that, you'll see that I'm no longer zoomed in. So if you want to change the way this photo looks, that's how we do it. Uh, let's have a look at something else. All right, here's an interesting one. Now, we notice how these photos twirl around and come in. How's that work? Okay, right click, custom motion. Okay, if you go along the timeline and just so you can see what the photo is doing. So it's rotating, it's, it's, it's going along the path. It's rotating. So here's the rotation you can see as I press play. You can see the rotation of the picture, right? So you have now control, you know, for the hell of it, let's uh, rotate it this way, all right? So you have control on how that photo comes into play. And that's why you want to use the advanced mode because you have way more control. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cancel that and then just keep, uh, keep going. So here we go. So like I said, you can change the text, everything. You can change the music. So as you can see, the early bird soundtrack just repeats itself over and over again. And you can change that. You can also do things like, hey, uh, this photo that I'm working on, I don't like the color. Fine. He's uh, got a runny nose there, isn't he? Fine, go back into edit, color correction. I can add a filter onto this and change the color. So you can see the advantages of using the advanced mode. Now, once I'm done, same thing, share. And then I'm back into my share options. And now, because why I don't want to use the share option in Fast Flick, because here, if I go into it, I can then customize the... Um, the option that I want to choose, right? So I don't, I don't have to stick with these. Like, let's say, I don't know, I'm going to go for this one here. I can then change the way these profiles are. I can, I can create my own custom profile. I can do whatever I want with, with this one here, like change the frame rate. Because originally in Fast Flick, I couldn't find a frame rate of 1280 by 720 at 30p. They only had one at 60p. And I don't understand why, because if I'm going to upload it to YouTube, YouTube transcodes it back down to 30 and I'm going to lose quality. So that was pointless. So use the share option in here because it's way, way better. All right. I sound like I'm rambling now, but you get the general idea of what you can do in uh, Video Studio using Fast Flick in the advanced mode. And as always, thanks for watching.